Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Nicola Roy from the Vegas Golden Knights in the National Hockey League. Welcome back to the show, sir. It's good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you. I mean, this is, I think, like your third time on the show. So, do I have to like get you anything, like a mug or something? Because you're a three time guest now. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's been a pleasure to be on the show. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Um, when you came on last time, you just got traded to the Vegas Golden Knights, who had a pretty successful career in the AHL, winning the Calder Cup with Charlotte. Um, what was your mindset when you cracked the lineup? for the Vegas Golden Knights, where it wasn't just kind of up and down, where you kind of solidify your spot. What was going through your mind when that moment happened? Uh, that was a pretty tough year, to be honest. That yeah. year I was playing uh, up and down, like you said. I, I probably traveled like 30 times in between uh, Vegas and Chicago in the, uh, in the AHL. So that was <laughs> a pretty tough year. But every time I was getting the call up, I was trying to, um, to play my best game and uh, prove that I am uh, a spot in the NHL. And I, I, I think... Uh, uh, I was able to do that in my first year in Vegas. We talked about a little bit before we started. I mean, playing against, you know, your hometown team, the Montreal Canadiens, scoring that goal in overtime, I mean, it was a pretty special moment. What was the fa- uh, what was the reaction and reception like from your family and friends? Did you have any family and friends at the game? Because fans were allowed at that game. Yeah, and my uh, my parents, my, uh, my sister was there. Uh, my girlfriend, uh, parents were... Uh, uh, were there as well, so it was uh, it was pretty amazing to be honest. Uh, it's it was kind of uh, uh, a little a little dream, I, I guess. Uh, playing uh, Montreal in the semifinals and and scoring that goals, it was uh, it was uh, unreal and a uh, really good feeling to uh, have my uh, my family there in the stands as well. Is it safe to say that this kind of run and this year, though, although it was a back and forth year, I mean, especially in the playoffs for you, I mean, those are important games for Nicolas Roy. I mean, you're going to be able to go in with momentum for next season. I mean, was that kind of also one of those things, too? You know, you get eliminated by the Montreal Canadiens, but the takeaway is that, you know, you were in a lot of big games and having a lot of big roles in those games, a lot of big ice time. Is it safe to say that was good momentum for the next season as well? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I want to. Uh, I think I always play my best game when it's important in, in those uh, uh, big moments, and uh, uh, I think I, w- I was able to do, to prove that again. But um, it was kind of a d- disappointment for for a team. I think yeah. we we can uh, we can do more. We want to win the Stanley Cup, and we, we were not able to do that last year. So uh, we work hard hard this summer, and uh, we're, we'll be ready for next season. Everyone always talks about the Con- Connor McDavid, Nathan McKinnon, Austin Matthews. One of the one of your teammates in Mark Stone, in my opinion, is one of the mo- the greatest players in the National Hockey League. What is it like playing with someone like that? And is it just really cool sometimes we're able to kind of just indirectly learn from him, just kind of being and playing with him and and, and seeing him in warm up? Like, what's that like? Yeah, it's amazing. He's uh, he's our captain. He's our leader. Uh, what I like about him is he does uh, everything on the ice. He's really good defensively. He's creating a lot of turnovers with his uh, good stick, uh, really good on the power play. Uh, but defensively, he can match uh, against really good players as well. So he does everything for us, and he's, he's working hard. So uh, he's, uh, that's why he's your leader. You, ha- you have had the opportunity throughout your junior year pro career to play in very big games, World Junior Hockey Championship, AHL Calder Cup Playoffs Championship with Charlotte, with Julien Gauthier, shout out to the GOAT. Um, yeah. What I mean, you it can't be that surprising for a lot of people that have watched your career because you, you have had the, the taste of the big game, but there's nothing like it, right? Stanley Cup Playoffs, like it's not, there's nothing that compares to it, right? Uh, I don't think so because you, <laughs> your whole life you dream about uh, having a chance to uh, compete for the Stanley Cup. That's what you, that's what you dream about. So uh, I've played in, like you said, a lot of really big games. But those those games, especially when you get close, like the semifinals, um, I think those are the, probably the, they are the best, the biggest games I've I've played so far. 
What have you noticed about the Vegas Golden Knight fan base from playing with the organization? It's pretty incredible. It's very passionate. What have you noticed about that fan base? It's been uh, it's been crazy. I think from from year uh, year one, uh, the fan base is is uh, is amazing. Every game we could every. I know a lot of people from my hometown that watch the game on TV, and they're like, "Wow, the the, the atmosphere was unbelievable during the playoffs in Vegas. It looks uh, it looks unreal." So, uh, we're really fortunate to to be uh, playing in front of uh, these people. Absolutely. Have you narrowed down, but like, what your favorite thing about being a professional hockey player is? I mean, obviously, the fact that you know you get to go in it like day in and day out play the game that you love but is there anything else you really like about playing the sport Nicola um I really like to go uh, in different cities uh get a view from uh like I said different city we we don't have really have time to like to to visit that much but no. I get to go on the road different different cities with the guys go for dinner it's uh it's it's really nice we're going to do a bit of a speed round now about your Vegas Golden Knights teammates. I want to know, who's the most competitive on the Vegas Golden Knights when it comes to like card games and ping pong and all that? Is there anyone that comes to mind? Yeah, it's pretty easy for me. It's Marchie. We always, uh, Marchie's so always... <laughs> yeah. I guess maybe because we're, we're both from Quebec, but we always uh, compete <laughs> every single game. Like you said, ping pong, cards, we always compete, so it's pretty nice. Do you all guys ever talk about, obviously he's a bit older than you, but like, did you ever talk about, you guys had a similar route where you had very big years in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, your last couple of years, because you both started in the league pretty young, but um, do you ever talk about that as well? Because your last year of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League and like the World Juniors and everything and his last year, those were big years for you guys. Have you ever talked about that at all? Yeah, we talk, we talk about it. We talk, uh, for me, I was more of a fan when, when he was in the league. So. <laughs> I was more looking at, at him uh, when he was playing for the Ramparts. But, uh, yeah, we do talk about it. We have uh, a couple of stories. Did you play him when you were your rookie? Is that what it was? Uh, it was gone already. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. There's an age difference there. Yeah. Um, who is who, – who has the best laugh? Is there someone on the Vegas Golden Knights that has a really good laugh? I mean, it's a weird question, I know, but people want to know. But, like, anyone have a good laugh? Uh, who has a good laugh? <laughs> It's a tough one. Um, a weird laugh. No, I, I don't have anybody for now. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like... Uh, I don't know. It, yeah, that is a tough one. Sometimes people know right away, but... Uh, um, okay, fine. This is another one that you might not expect. Who has the biggest appetite? Like, who can eat the most? Like, who... I mean, you're all like like before games and everything and after games, but like who do you know that one? Um, I first guy that came in uh, to my mind was Ryan Reeves. I guess he he got traded, but he was uh, eating a lot. Um, I know uh, Zach White Cloud as well. He's got a big uh, <laughs> absolutely. Before we leave, very quickly. You know, we talked about it. You were a mainstay in the lineup for the Vegas Golden Knights. You scored an overtime goal. You were part of some big plays and got a good amount of, of time on the ice. What does Nicolas Roy need to do to continue solidifying his spot in the Vegas Golden Knights for next season? Um, I think I've, I've proved uh, over the past two years that I can be a reliable defensively and I can be a really good uh, third line centerman, uh, play against those, uh, those tough matchup with good players. But I think I have another layer to my game where I can bring more offensive, uh, produce uh, more offensively, maybe play uh, some power play. Uh, I think that's where I can uh, bring more to, uh, to the team. You're a big guy. You have a big shot. I mean, it's not even just more a slap shot. I remember a goal you scored in the World Juniors that was just almost like a toe drag, and it was like top shelf, and it was insane. I think it might have been in the gold medal game. Is it possible that you scored in the gold medal game? Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? I remember. It's it's interesting because it wasn't really a slap shot. It was like uh it was more of like a like a it felt like a wrist shot almost. Toe drag. And, it was a toe drag. Yeah. Is that something that you worked on a lot more, considering the fact that you are this big guy? You have an opportunity, but people think about slap shots when they're big guys. They don't necessarily think about like the toe drag wrister a little bit. 
Well, I've I've talked to a lot of uh, goaltenders, and for them, it's it's harder when you uh, you have a long reach like me, and you you, you toe drag, you change the uh, the angle of the shot, and it's it's harder for them to to know where it's going. So I try to to work on it a lot. That was sweet. I remember that. That's on like YouTube. I'll go watch that on YouTube. That was that was a good goal. Um, yeah. No, it was it was unbelievable. Nicolas, thank you so much for coming back on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Pete. People can wa- follow you, right? In- you're on Instagram. If they want to follow yeah. you, you post sometimes over there, right? Yeah, Nick Wa 55 <laughs> Amazing. This has been Pop Turner Dave, YouTube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Until next time, it's Nicolas Roy from the Vegas Golden Knights and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.